afternoon, everybody. It's Kurt Staley from Simcoe Plastics, the good guy in plastics, coming to you from my favorite playground, the Barry Yacht Club in beautiful Barry, Ontario, Canada. So last week I started the first of a three-part series talking about how did we get here with plastic and talking a little bit about beverage containers. And you know, the argument basically that I put forth is that plastics are just so efficient that they pretty well dominate any other packaging um, method that they'll go up against. They can be made quickly, efficiently, they're lightweight, they're not breakable like glass. You know, in the case of, say for example, the old glass pop bottles, I'm sure we all know somebody who broke a few of those in their time. So plastic as a medium is very, very safe. It's efficient, it checks all the right boxes, except, you know, when we transition from glass to plastic, we weren't yet recycling. At least we're recycling something, but we're not recycling enough. This week, I wanted to talk to you about this stuff, plastic bags. And this has got to be one of the hottest issues in terms of recycling and environmental protection. Uh, probably more important, more impact than uh, not using straws. Um, the plastic bag has really become one of the icons that, uh, that people think of when they think about the misuse of plastics and why we need to cut down on single-use disposable plastics. And they're absolutely right. So how did we get here? Well, it's a very similar story with the plastic bag versus the plastic water bottle or any type of plastic food container. Plastic is inexpensive as a medium to work with. We bring it up from the ground, it's oil, it's all oil-based, of course. It can be refined, it can be returned into mon monomer, then turned into a polymer, this is polyethylene, and very easily formed in bags very quickly. You know, a typical machine, what, two, three, four, five thousand an hour, you know, different capacities for different size of bags. It's very difficult to compete with the production economics of a piece of plastic. Not to mention when plastics, uh, plastic bags became the norm in grocery stores, and I'm sure you remember as a kid going to grocery stores back when there were paper bags, and for the most part, paper bags worked fairly well. But the plastic bag offered the ability to have handles, there we go, there are the handles, still there, molded right into the bag. They could decorate very easily and very beautifully, and they didn't suffer from the, the um, say, coming apart, if you will, like paper would do if you put in um, something wet, like a, a milk container that had some condensation or, you know, something along those lines. So from a customer standpoint, the plastic bag afforded them convenience. It afforded them something that could carry their food a little bit safer. You know, the bottom literally wasn't going to fall out if, if there was, uh, you know, some moisture in one of the goods put in. So it seemed like a pretty good idea. And I guess to some degree, it still seems like a pretty good idea because we haven't really seen it re be replaced with anything else. But I'll tell you, it's not that great an idea because they're not being recycled. And it's a pity really because this is polyethylene. It is a thermal plastic. So that means it can be heated, it can be processed, turned into a good, it can be recycled, ground up, heated, turned into a good again, and so on and so on for probably 12, 15 times, uh, provided it can be recovered and recycled in a clean manner, which is pretty cool. But we're not doing that, and that's the problem. That is the problem. So what are we going to do in the short term? Well, I think we have to do a couple of things, and I'm fighting the gimbal here on my phone, so I apologize, it's doing some funny things. I just may take it off and, and hand hold, we'll see. Um, so what are we going to do? Well, I don't think this is a question of promoting recycling, even though we obviously have to. It's a, it's a plastic good, and if we can recycle a bag, we need to do that. But most municipalities don't take bags in their blue bins for the very simple reason, not that it can't be recycled, there just aren't very many facilities that have the right equipment to recycle plastic bags. It requires a very unique piece of equipment called a densifier. The problem with densifiers, they do work by the way, they do take film and convert them back into a pellet that can be used. Um, the problem is they can't necessarily do it at a fast enough rate to justify the cost of doing it, and that's really a shame. So we've got something that's incredibly efficient on the front end, the production end, but not incredibly efficient to recycle. 
So the plastics industry did a study, um, and I could probably find the link to it, but it suggested that the reusable bags, the cotton bags, um, it would take using those approximately 7,200 times one of those reusable bags to equal the carbon footprint generated by just one plastic bag. So it's suggesting that the reusable bags are in fact inefficient to produce. And when you consider the supply chain to produce a textile, sew it into a bag, distribute a bag, a bag that weighs far more than a plastic bag, so we would need extra shipping to get those to distribution centers and get them to retailers. Yeah, okay, I can see their point. It's not as efficient, but the reusable bag is just that. It's reusable and not once or twice. It's reusable for years and we're not putting them into landfill at an alarming rate. So this may be a question or a time to question whether or not the efficiency of production really is the better way to go versus the inefficiency on the back end of the process. So what would I would suggest? If you don't need a bag from a retailer, simply don't take one, uh, regardless of what kind of bag they're offering. If you don't need it, don't take it. But if you have your own reusable bags, um, be it a high quality plastic bag that you can get multiple, multiple uses out of, or a textile bag or a paper bag, bring your own bags. You know, let's, let's give ourselves and the environment a bit of a break with single use disposable stuff. We really need to do it. And it's uh, quite frankly, it's only our environment we're talking about because we can't deal with this stuff yet. Maybe the municipalities will eventually have the means to process plastic bags, but today it's, it's just not really the case. It's not consistent. Would I like to do something about that? Sure. But right now I'm just one guy and I can't, I can't fight every battle. I've chosen a few things that I'm going to go after uh, to try and have an impact with uh, recycling plastics where they're good clean streams to work with but I'm not sure I'm ready for this one. So if there's somebody out there that has technology that's efficient to reprocess bags, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to have the dialogue. Until then, let's consider backing off on the use of these. Probably not a bad thing to do. So, till we talk next time, try and redu reduce your use of bags. Think about the things that you buy. Choose quality. Choose quality things that will last. That's real efficiency. Quality is efficiency. Longevity is efficiency. This, it's only efficient when it's made. It's not efficient over its lifespan. And I think we really need to start thinking about the goods we buy in terms of their overall lifespan and get back to buying things that actually last rather than things that serve a few seconds worth of utility and are discarded. So, end of sermon, end of lesson. We'll talk next week about the use of plastics in automotive, where I think it's a much better story. There's some real positives there, both in terms of recycling, applications, technology, and where we go forward. But until then, please remember, go out there and protect your playground. It's Kurt Staley from Simcoe Plastics. We'll talk next week. Thanks.